Bubbles here. Ah, Bubbles. What's up? And she has an excellent question. The book Rangila Rasul, which led to the blasphemy laws in Indian Pakistan and uh, some murders, I believe, is still freely available online. Do you think XMNA or someone would be interested in publishing it? Well, shoot, we could, we, could, we could publish it. Yeah, we have a... Atheist Republic has a publishing arm. Yeah, we have a uh, publishing imprint. XMNA, XMNA doesn't have a publishing arm, okay? Atheist Republic has a publishing arm. We have books under our belt. Yeah. yeah, wait, where can I find this bubble? You got my email? Send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but w wait, don't promise anything because we 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 said we're not going to add any more books for a long time. No, but if it's this good, I'd be willing to put in the work. Oh my god. Don't the main, no I'm promises. Not, I'm not promising. The main uh, prohibiting factor was my time. I want to see if it's on Amazon already. Russell. All right, we got it in our super chat. Oh my shit! The first thing that comes up is Indian spices. There is no okay. book, just spices. <laughs> you could look that later. You could look up that later. Okay. Come on. Uh, Omar Sheikh is saying, "Oh, thank you again for the uh, five pounds." Um, pointless to have dinner with Adnan Rashid and Ali Dawa and then read their Quran, which they love dearly confirms their fears to ex-muslims okay omar like thank you for the super chats but you're very stuck on this um but it wasn't pointless in my opinion yeah no i i i think it was very helpful to show actually now that i think about it that's very how how amazing that is the message that i'm sending actually omar you're proving to me that how you're actually making you reminding me how, about how awesome my tactics are because i <laughs> Yeah, because look at what I have done. I have done, when it comes to Islam and things that don't hurt anybody, I have done the worst in their eyes, right? Mm -hmm. I've taken the Quran, I spit on the Quran, and I ripped the Quran apart, okay? So when it comes to things that don't, when it comes to things that are not people and don't hurt anybody, I have gone to the extreme end on one side. And when it comes to uh, the people, even the ex-Muslim community told me, like, these are people that are not worth uh, talking to. You shouldn't be friends with them. I went and had dinner with them. And I tried to make, try to make, become friends with them. Yeah, it doesn't work, but I tried. I had dinner with them. We talked. We had a good time. We had lots of laughs, right? So when it comes to people, I, like, the people that a lot of ex-Muslims hate the most, I went and had dinner with them. When it comes to ideas and the book and pieces of paper, I've done extreme other. I'm showing people, I'm communicating to the people yeah. that how aggressively anti-Islam I could be. And when it comes to Muslims as people themselves, how friendly I could be with them. It doesn't really matter if they accept me as a friend or not. I'm showing that it's possible to do both. And thank you, actually. Thank you for giving me the opportunity and to showing how... I do do both of these things at the same time. So, yeah, you're well, wrong. Like, here's the thing. I think it was also helpful that you did that because, I mean, you've talked to me about this before. When you went and had dinner with Ali Dawa, you were actually able to see how much backlash you got from the ex-Muslim community for doing that. Yeah, yeah. Like, that itself was very revelatory in a way. Yeah. Why so, are you saying... Why are you eating with these people? Like, why are you hanging out with these people? These people are like so bad. And like, why are you eating? Why are you talking to them? Right. So I did blast, I did I, I, ex blasphemy in the ex Muslim community. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I think you yeah. said something along the lines of like, it showed you how much work like your community has to do on that front as well. You know, like it's not a one way street. Yeah. Yeah. And it also shows that I don't, I'm not just talk, talk, talk. I do like, I do what I preach, right? So I'm let just them like, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, also let me brag about this thing. Look, oh. people like I just because you give us super chat, that doesn't mean we're gonna like agree with everything you say. Like we're gonna call you out even if you're giving us but, but yeah, we're gonna still thank you for the super chat though. Thank you so much for the five pound super chat. Um we're such a great channel, Susanna. <laughs> we're like so honest to our audience. We have the best takes on everything. True. <laughs> no, I mean, it is us against the world. Yes. Yes, it is. True. Um, well, I actually have a question for the live chat. 
if you saw me on uh, Har Sultan's channel, what did you think? Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's bring up some. Oh, here. Goddess Katie is saying something. Oh, this is not a question. Guys, send us a question if you're tagging us, not comments. Katie saying the ideology of Hindu 12 was developed by a far right atheist uh, in 1923. It became political, and they're probably the first person to call himself a Hindu atheist. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I knew that. I knew that. Yeah. Well, I didn't know the Hindu atheist part. I knew that it, it was a far right atheist who started Hindu 12. Um, it's it's very again. It's very similar to far right. Um, low melanated nationalist again mm -hmm. i'm not saying the full word because um youtube doesn't like that right no why why okay um I, <laughs> yeah nationalist in uh, who in north america and western europe who are not christian but you want to use christianity as a form of creating a western identity they're atheists right a lot of far right groups in North America and Western Europe, uh, they are atheists, but they want to use Christianity as a way to create a Western identity, which is, again, very similar to India when it comes to the atheist Hindutva people who they themselves don't believe in anything supernatural, but they want to use a Hinduism as a way to create an, um, an ethno, to promote an ethno state uh, and to promote their bigotry. Very similar. It's, it's so crazy how similar this is in Western Europe, North America, in is far right movements in Israel, and then far right movements like the far right people in in India. They all like very, like they're not connected with each other, but they behave a lot very similar to each other. Oh, we got another super chat. Oh, from the the To Be Determined podcast gave us two dollars. Thank you. Saying, do you know Alden's number? No. Who the hell is Alden? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hold on, let me search. Yeah, am I supposed to know this? Alden? That's just oh. the first name. Okay. We we actually we actually gave the right answer. Because Alden's number is a rhetorical strategy used to call out someone who is pretending to be very knowledgeable about a topic they know nothing about. So it's supposed to be like you ask it and somebody says like oh yeah i know it so to, to <laughs> because it's, it, it's not it's nothing i just looked it up and it's like nothing right it's a trick <laughs> to see like if you're full of crap right so we pass because we both That's said so like, funny wait because i thought this meant someone's phone number <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but but I said I don't know. Let me look it up. So I pass. I didn't. I'm not. That means that when I tell you I'm good at something, I am good at something because when I don't know something, I'm <laughs> that's actually the takeaway, guys. That, that's the takeaway. The takeaway <laughs> take take is that I'm not full of crap, even when I am being self congratulatory. Is because it's true. Because if I don't know something, I do, I'm actually going to be honest with you guys, and I say I don't know. I pass the Alden test. I passed the Alden test, okay? So every other time that I'm saying I'm, I'm so awesome at something, it's true. Uh, oh, we have a super chat from Alu Zakbar. It's $3. Wait, but I'm not, I don't have the live chat open. Can you see what it is? Oh, no. I don't know. Guys, tell us what it is. I don't have the live chat open as well. Yeah, StreamYard doesn't pull for this. They so need bad super chats and they need freaking the emotes from YouTube. Oh, I feel God. like our members don't use our emotes as much. Yeah, God, yeah. Well, because we can't highlight them. And yeah. look, when people use our emotes, when we highlight it, it doesn't show on Streamyard. It's so sad. This is something that they need to improve on. Hold it. Let me see. Oh, oh they're it's saying a, it was a fist bump. It's a pear. It's a fruit that is doing fist bumps. Thank, Thank you so you much, guys. For Thank you, guys. Cute. Well, uh, I think we're coming up on our time. Oh, right? yeah. We're good. We're good. Should we talk about our, our new um, format for the Q&As, or are we going to talk about that later? No. 
Oh, yeah, we're going to switch between one week we're going to do public Q&A and then next week we're going to do members only Q&A. So we're going to do only one Q&A every, every week. Uh, we're going to switch between public Q&A one week and then the next week we're going to do a member YouTube member only Q&A. Um, and then again, switch, switch, yes. switch. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Kali, you know, like me, and that means that you probably want more Blasphemous art. Well, I have good news for you. If you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below, then you get a free booklet of some of the tastiest Blasphemous art available today. So if you want some of this delicious blasphemy, and we're so generous that we update it for you guys weekly for free, all you have to do is sign up for our newsletter below. Uh, you can also go to blasphemousart.com slash ebook. That's blasphemousart.com slash ebook. Sign up with your email and you get free gifts of this tasty blasphemy. What could be better? So make sure you sign up. Link below.